Aloha Honolulu! Data here with episode 43, the final episode of the Honolulu Huskies custom fantasy draft franchise mode. Here in the final sim all the way to year number 25, the 2043-44 season. If you are new to the series and you haven't been following along, no problem. Let me quickly recap it for you. Here in Honolulu, we started off this series. The NHL was reset. We took over the Anaheim Ducks who moved out to the island of Hawaii, the islands of Hawaii. We built an arena on top of Diamond Head Volcano, and here we are, Diamond Head Arena, and we are the Honolulu Huskies. So not only was it a fantasy draft, it was a custom fantasy draft franchise mode because this series included 16 custom players. Here's just a few of them right here. Uh, Sandro Gerante, Derek Mongo, Duke Silver, D'Angelo Vickers, Ellis Anderson, Eddie Fontaine. We built 16 new custom players for the NHL, all of them 18 years old, all of them 85 overall, and all of them medium franchise potential. So with our first pick in the fantasy draft, we, we picked around uh, 20th overall. We selected Miko Rantanen, and then our second selection, it was the last created player available of all the 16 of them. 15 had been drafted except the last one, Duke Silver, the smoothest man in all of Southern Indiana with his saxophone talent. We took him. Later on in the franchise mode, the Nashville Predators put Ellis Anderson on the trade blocks. We went ahead and got him as well. So we pretty much played most of this franchise mode with two of the 16 created players. Didn't want to make it too unbalanced in our favor. Plus, they cost a lot of money. So I thought it was pretty fair, especially with the way the NHL was stacked against us at times. So we had a lot of success here in Honolulu. Our first few seasons were tough. Of our first five seasons, we only made the playoffs twice. Both times losing in the second round. Or sorry, losing in seven games in the first round. I forgot. That was just brutal. Then after that, we started making the playoffs and we never looked back again. From year number six onward until we stopped at year number 14 we had been in the playoffs every season and we didn't win the Stanley Cup until year number 10 but after we did we won in years number 10 11 12 and 13 for four straight Stanley Cups we lost in year number 14 so we couldn't make it five in a row but this is where we're picking up heading into year number 15. So let me tell you what you're going to be seeing in this video. At the beginning of every season, this is the screen that you're gonna be shown. So here's an example of what we're gonna see heading into year 15. I'll do this one alongside you, but then after that, you're on your own. You gotta use uh, your reading skills. So heading into the season, it is year number 15, and it is 2033-34. As of our 14 previous seasons, our current all-time record, is 715 wins, 338 losses, and 95 overtime losses. In the playoffs, we've won 101 games, we've lost 58. We have won eight President's Trophies, all of them coming consecutively, by the way. We have made the Stanley Cup Finals four times, and we have won four Stanley Cups. The most wins that we have gotten in a season is at 63 wins in the 2028-29 season. And our top players, just skaters by the way, not including goalies, our top skaters heading into the season overall-wise are Duke Silver at 96, Ellis Anderson at 96, Skylar Pellick at 93, and Eli Tolvanen and Ezra Pittis both at 92. So in each season, I'm going to start off by showing you the lines for that season. I'll show you the team stats in terms of our record. I'll show you the player stats in terms of points. Then I'll show you the playoff tree for that season. I'll show you the cup celebration if we were lucky enough to win the Stanley Cup, followed by the playoff player stats. Then any awards that we may have won, any retirements, mo a few big retirements, but mostly just retirements that pertain to our team, followed by any big draft picks that we made, first round picks, and any other big offseason moves. As it always is in all franchise modes, the world begins to inflate a little too much. You have 79 overall defensemen who want five and a half, six million dollars. So it was tough to keep this team under, sal under the salary cap and stay competitive at the same time. But I don't really believe much in rebuilds in NHL, to be honest, unless you're starting off. Once you have a good core, I love just running with it. And you'll see that with Silver, Anderson, Pellick, Pittis, and others like Lindback and our soon-to-be new starting goalie, as we've known from the last few episodes, Guy Supre who we drafted a couple of seasons ago. So without further ado, we're gonna start hopping into it. Now make sure you stay tuned till the end of this to see all the final stats in terms of our final all-time record, all the awards that our players have ever won, all the really big things such as how much did Duke Silver get, how much did Ellis Anderson get, 
all the big awards. How, how good was our coach, Damien Palmieri? How good were the created players? Which ones were the best? Which ones didn't do so hot? As well as helping me decide what our next series is going to be here on NHL 20. So go check out the comments to cast your vote on the final options that I've decided that you'll hear at the end of the episode. I really hope you enjoy this. I've put a lot of work day and night into it, grinding out. This is my biggest project that I've ever worked on for any video on the channel. Injuries were off and scouting was automatic, but aside from that, every single season I went through the lines, through the special teams, made sure the coaching was set, re-signed all the staff, drafted prospects, made the appropriate trades, and dealt with all the contract headaches. So I didn't just let it simulate by itself, I really put a lot of time and thought into every single season, which took many, many hours. So I'd really appreciate it. If you just left a comment, let me know what you thought about it. Any record that really blew your mind, leave a like. Drop a subscription as well, putting out lots of content on the channel, mostly NHL, doing FIFA, even a walkthrough currently of SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. So it means a lot to hear from you and what you think. But if you like numbers and records and crazy simulated uh, players and, and, um, and season totals, then you will really, really enjoy this video. So without further ado, let's hop into year number 15, the 2033-34 season. So apologies, you'll hear me clicking around on some things on my laptop, but going into year number 15, our lines are pretty much the same as you last saw them in year number 14. Tolvin and Silver, Pellick with a plus five on the first line, Pittis, Wong, Marsha, Pitton, Perfetti, Shannon, the best third line in all of hockey, and Beta, Jennings, and Corazini, the plus three on the fourth line. Jennings, that draft, the prospect that we got with a draft pick as well in the Carson Barker trade. Over on de defense, Mats Lindback at an 88 and Ellis Anderson at 96, giving it that plus five as always. Noakes and Menino and Sutter and Kaigorodov on that bottom pair. Between the pipes, we have Steven Beck starting at an 88 overall with Guy Supler backing him up at an 84. We went ahead and traded Saul Bentley, just like everyone recommended that we do. He'll be our starter for this season, but we know that coming soon, we're going to have Guy Supre in the system. Regular season-wise, we went 62-13-7 for another President's Trophy. The Penguins right behind, well, behind us at 112. Another President's Trophy for us, 4.83 goals, 4 per game. Power play, best in the league at almost 40%. Penalty kill at 83.9 was also best in the NHL, so very rare that we have best power play and best penalty kill. Very nice to see that. 131 points and we want to see where Ottawa finished because we know we have their first round pick this year We got that in the Barker deal and they finished in 27th. So fifth from the bottom Hopefully that'll be a good pick for us. It was a good trade. They had uh, 34 41 and 7 as their record So we got uh, Gail Jennings and that first round pick in exchange for the um, in, For Carson Barker who in the end is not even on the Senators if you go up if we go and search his name He's on the Tampa Bay Lightning here. He had a good season with them. He signed a six-year, ten-plus million dollar deal. So sorry, Ottawa. Ellis Anderson, 111-point season, plus 69, 95 overall at 33 years old. One of his best seasons of his career, best plus minus wise, but one of the best point career season totals of his career. Eli Tolvanen, 34 years old, last year of his deal, he puts up 100 and how many? 102, I think. A career high in points, possibly. Yes, a career high in points at the age of 34. What a season to go out on for Eli Tolvin, and I wish we could keep him longer. Pelic 101, I think that's a career high from him as well. Yes, it is, 101 points from him. Duke Silver puts up triple digits once again, another 100-point season. Four of his last 500 points, I believe. Reed Pitton, 97 points on the third line with 40 goals. What kind of a third line is this? 97 points. Perfetti gets 89 points. It's just blowing my mind that this third line can be so lethal. Wong, 86. Shannon, the other piece of the third line, getting 77 points. Unbelievable. Trevor Wong, another season as the dish man, uh, going 86 points for him. Going a bit more in-depth since it's players that you guys still know. Marshawn Lindback, Jennings in his uh, 34 points for him. Uh, Lindback, good plus, plus 68. Ezra Pittis, bit of a down year. Actually better than his last three seasons. But uh, Sheldon Marshawn as well in his second season puts up 65 points, 41 goals in his sophomore season. Very nice to see from him. Gail Jennings, Stan Noakes, the offensive defenseman. Menino, a plus 43, monstrous. The plus minuses were amazing this season. Going between the pipes, Beck went 53-12-6. Nine shutouts, 9-10 save percentage, 2.35 goals against. And Guy Supra as well having a great season. But Steven Beck, last year of his deal, 
Supra, 9-1-1, one, one, one shout-out, 9-13, 2.2 goals against. He looks like he's set to be the future. But Steven Beckman, what a monster. Just looking at all the, the entire NHL, uh, in points, Ellis Anderson was leading defenseman. He was, uh, Jin Kyo Chung was right behind him. In the goalie category, of course, Steven Beck leading the NHL in wins. Looks like he had the best numbers as well. And over on Buffalo, Quinn Hughes, who we had to trade away, scored 50 points for them. And we traded Bentley to the Penguins. Speaking of the Pittsburgh Penguins, we swept them in the Stanley Cup Finals. We swept the Kings. We beat the Flames in five, beat the Avalanche in six, and then we beat the Penguins in four. It was just great to win the Stanley Cup. One more time, we know for sure, with Eli Tolvanen. And Steven Beck got to do it as our starter once again. That was, I think that's his fourth cup, but his third uh, or second as a starter. Duke Silver won the Conn Smythe Trophy, our captain, putting up another great playoff as always. Big smiles with Gary. Let's see that mustache. What a legend. Captain, 1776. Goes to get the Stanley Cup from Gary as well. Gary's looking really young these days. I'm glad that he's doing well. And he raises the Stanley Cup. There it is. On the road once again. We're always on the road when we win the Cup. But Duke Silver wins it. He hands it over. First person that he handed it over to was Gail Jennings, the rookie. Then Cole Perfetti gets to go on a little run with it. He really deserves it. Age of 32, 33 now. There's Beck raising the cup. Big smiles from him. And then everybody gather all together for one last pick. In the playoffs, it was Eli Tolvin who led the way in points. So I'm surprised that Duke Silver won the Conn Smythe. But wow, Eli Tolvin really goes out big time leading our team in playoff points. And look at everybody else's totals as well. Pitt in 20, Marchand 20, everyone really chipped in. No one really didn't pull their weight for this Stanley Cup. And Steven Beck, 16, two and one, 913 save percentage, 2.19 goals against. I'd argue he could win the Conn Smythe as well. Stanley Cup to the Huskies, of course, as we know, another President's Trophy, nothing new there. The Hart Trophy went to Ellis Anderson, which is really great to see. That's his second in the last three years. He also won another James Norris. Lady Bing went to Eli Tolvanen. Steven Beck won the Vezina and the Jennings, of course, and the Ted Lindsay going to Ellis Anderson as well. Very, very nice to see him getting so much hardware. In the retirements, big names going out. Dreisaitl, Barkov, Kucherov, Aho, Matthews, Marner. List goes all the way down. Horvat, Barzil, etc., etc. Connor Hellebuck as well. Uh, old man Hellebuck. Ilya Samsonov our former goalie who had great, great seasons with us. He also goes out. In the lottery, We with the, the fifth best odds, we dropped to the seventh overall pick, unfortunately, from the Ottawa Senators. We could have drafted this guy, Mathieu Dufresne, maybe Gagnon. Their stats were okay, Terrence Duffy, but I decided to go with someone who was guaranteed medium elite, Abel Urkamps. I likely had 69 points in 66 games, similar to Joe Thornton, playmaker of the future. So I went ahead and drafted him. 65 overall, medium elite. And we could see that those other guys were also medium top six, 65 overall, so no big deal there. Unfortunately, we had to trade Eli Tolvanen. We couldn't keep him any longer. We shipped him off to the Colorado Avalanche for some draft picks. What a career for Eli Tolvanen. If we go over to him now, we just look at his stats. Look at those numbers. 1,115 points. Many of them coming with us. He played so many seasons. I think he had 10 seasons with us. 24, 24, uh, nine seasons or so. Put up his best numbers then. 202 points in 180 playoff games, just minus 16 games with the Islanders. He was a monster for us, and he has a handful of rings. Looking at the contract sitch, it was a tough offseason with lots of people needing contracts. Look at Reed Pitten going up to 12.225. We know that we can't keep him longer than probably next season. But Menino costing 6.45 as well. Uh, Shannon's contract's not going to last forever. Perfetti's won't. Marshawn is entry-level deal. We had to trade Steven Beck, of course, to make room, room for Guy Supre. So we traded him over to the Dallas Stars. But great, great numbers for Steven Beck. Former second-round pick. It hurt to trade him because we knew how good he was. 92-27-9 with 16 shutouts in his career. And as a starter, he just went bananas, getting the, the, the Vezina in his first really official year as a starter. We ended up getting two seconds and two thirds from the Stars, and he was off to Dallas. In year number 16, with Eli Tolvanen gone, Ezra Pittis was up on the first line with Silver and Pelic. 
Second line, now Shannon, Perfetti, and Pitten. Perfetti had an 88, kind of overtook Wong, and I didn't want Corazzini on the second line, so I decided to promote the third line to the second line. He still has fantastic stats. Last year of his contract, though, so I don't know if we'll be able to keep him after this season. He has been a, a real diamond in the rough the last, like, three seasons, exploding with Shannon and Pitten. So we'll try them on the second line. Marshawn with Wong, another great season, uh, line, even though it's on the third line. Wong, we got him locked up long term. Jennings at an 82. On defense, Anderson and Lindback are still a plus five. Sutter, Menino. Kaigordov, I changed him to a two-way D to make it a zero instead of a negative three. He has good uh, skating and defense and shooting uh, well enough, so I made him a two-way D. Quick, our seventh round pick is in there. I put Sutter on the power play. It was the last year of his deal to try and give him a little push, hopefully boost his stats and get something going. The plus five, plus one, I think the, the power play lines were quite sol solid. Guy Supra now our official starter, 87 overall. Kravchenko, our fourth round pick, is the backup, but Supra excited to have him as our official starter. For the captaincy, Cole Perfetti now getting an A on his jersey since Eli Tovenin is gone. Unfortunately, the Sutter experiment did not work. We uh, threw 62 games. He had 15 points. It was okay, but not as much as I would have wanted for a second pair D. Shipped him for Cole Letty, a good two-way D with good shooting, good defense, decent stats as well, and a new backup goalie since Kravchenko was not really doing so hot, as you can see by his numbers here. So we shipped him off to Dallas for it. Cost a little bit more, a couple of picks. But we we won another President's Trophy, one point ahead only of the Stars, our closest ever trophy, 56-21-5 and five was our record, best power play in the NHL, our penalty kill was pretty rough, but we just edged out that the team that we made all the trades with, the Dallas Stars, who almost beat us, but another President's Trophy for us, Duke Silver, 102 points at the age of 34, still getting it done, Ellis Anderson, 100 points for him as well, monsters, Cole Perfetti, 92 points here in a contract year, he's going to want big money. Our second line center this year, putting up career highs in assists and in points. So great to see from Cole Perfetti, a former pick of ours. Uh, Ezra Pittis, 86. Pitten, 82 point per game. Shannon at 80 with 53 goals. Pellick, 80. Wong, 72. Even as a third line center, still 72 points, which was lower than usual, but still amazing. Marshaw, 59. Letty, uh, in, the, in the games that he played, 7 points and a plus 12 in 20 games. So a nice addition for us from the Stars. And so on and so forth. For the goalies, Guy Supra, 49-17-3 with four shutouts in his rookie season. 9.05 save percentage, 2.63 goals against average. Those were our two backups throughout the season. But Guy Supra playing 70 games. Led the NHL in wins. Beck was right behind him. Great numbers, 9.12 save percentage. So it hurt to have to trade him. Eddie Fontaine down there at the age of 34. Bentley on Minnesota at an 89 overall. Had uh, not great numbers, unfortunately. Just to note that Jack Hughes, Kirby Dock, and Owen Tippett on the Flames, all like 35 years old, had 100 plus points each, which was insane. All 33, 34, 35 years old. That really didn't make sense. But even uh, McKinnon. Jinkyo Chong scored 50 goals for 84 points, but Els Anderson still just a few steps ahead of him. In the playoffs, we swept the Avalanche, but then we lost to the Kings in six, who ended up losing to the Montreal Canadiens in the Stanley Cup Finals in six as well. So that was a heartbreaker. No cup for us this season. In the playoffs, Perfetti and Silver went point per game plus with 10 and 11 points respectively. Pelic, Marsha, Anderson, Shannon all pitching in, but just wasn't good enough. Our goalie did well, though. Guy Supra, 6-4-0 oh, with one shutout, 900 save percentage, 2.71 goals against. We just got outscored, I suppose. So another President's Trophy, as we said, like always, James Norris once gun going to Ellis Anderson, except for that one loss to Jin Kyo Chong, it has just been very consistent from him. Vezina goes to Guy Supra in his rookie season, but not the Calder Trophy for some reason, also capturing the Jennings Trophy. And when it came to the retirements, Eli Tolvanen with 1,206 points, still an 87 overall with years on his contract, 36 years old. He calls it a career. One year with the Avalanche, put up 91 points. Best numbers of his career came in his last season. He calls it a career. Kill McCarr retired, so... Thank you to Eli Tolvanen, Lucas Dostal, Nora Jokovic, all those guys retired. In the draft, we had the 24th overall pick. We took Pedro Hewitt, who was, our scout said was 20th. He ended up being medium top six. And with our other first round pick, we took Maximus Eaton, who was 77 overall, medium top six grinder. Cole Perfetti, unfortunately, went to the Buffalo Sabres. I tried to re-sign him with the little money that I could offer, but he wanted to go to Buffalo. He really wanted to make money there. 
And speaking of Buffalo, unfortunately, we also had to trade Reed Pitt in there. We knew that that $12.25 million contract couldn't last forever. He got another 82-point season for us. We got him from Columbus for dirt cheap. He only had uh, two, a season and a half under his belt, and then he just exploded with us. One of the best goal scorers in our franchise history. We traded him for two first-round picks, and that uh, enabled us to re-sign Marshawn for $12 million for five years and Quinn Shannon for ten point eight two five for seven years. In year number 17, the first line staying the same, Pitt is Silver Pellick. Second line now, Shannon, Wong, and Marsha, a hybrid of that second and third line coming together. Corazini, Jennings now our third line center. Hunter, our second round pick from 2031, makes the third line. Nylander, Hyvenen, a new player, a power forward uh, drafted by the Montreal Canadiens with five-star shooting, four-star uh, physical, and Marty Phillips with four-and-a-half-star defense, a first round pick from the Sabres, our fourth line. Parker Martinez making the cut this season, a sixth round pick in 2028, five-star shooting, like four-star senses. He's played four seasons in San Diego, and I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do with Menino on the third pair, Kai Gordov and Quick on the third, Anderson Lindback always on that first one. Guy Supre now up to an 88 overall, but he's on the last year of his entry-level deal, and so is Kravchenko, who's at an 82, so it's going to be tough in the contract situation to see who grows and who does what. Guy Supre, 88 overall. Mikola, another uh, medium elite goalie, we had too many of them. A fourth round pick in 2032, I think. We shipped him off for Cade Reeves, a first round pick sniper with five star shooting already from the Devils. Second and a fourth, I got lucky me. And he slotted in 79 overall onto our first line down in San Diego. There's a little update on San Diego's lines and our prospects. Cali Nordfist, the high elite prospect. A power play, I put Parker Martinez on as well to see what he can do. Five-star puck skills, by the way, and five-star shooting. Another President's Trophy, boys. 64-13-5 and five is our, was our record. A power play percentage of 37.1 to lead the NHL. And a penalty kill, look at this, of 83. So not always uh, that we always get in the top two, but we're there. Ellis Anderson, 115 points at the age of 35. He just keeps getting triple digits. Three straight seasons of over 100 points and five of his last six seasons. And one of the best seasons in his career, by the way. 115 points, 39 goals. Duke Silver puts up 109. Ezra Pittis, 105, far surpassing uh, anything he's done recently and also a new career best as well. Skyler Pellick, 99. Wong, 86. Marshall, 73, a career high from him. Quinn Shannon, a bit of a downgrade to 61 without Perfetti. Parker Martinez in his rookie season, 58 points. Look at this guy. The puck skills and the shooting all came together, and he had a monstrous rookie season. Guy Supra, 58 wins, 10 and 4. Nine shutouts, 9 11 save percentage, 2.45 goals against. Kravchenko did well as a backup, but look at those numbers from Guy Supra. Best in the NHL by far. Rory Cherry just had two more points than Ellis Anderson. Martinez was uh, tied in the rookie race, so we'll see what happens for the Calder. But unfortunately, we swept the Oilers, we beat the Coyotes in seven, we swept the Predators, and then we get swept ourselves. The first time in franchise history that we make the Stanley Cup Finals and don't win. So the Capitals sweep us in the Finals after we had gone 12-3. Uh, and three through the first three rounds. So that was very unfortunate. Another President's Trophy, as we said. Ellis Anderson, once again winning the Hart Trophy. He goes on, off, on, off, uh, just uh, like a pattern over here. His third in the last five years. Also getting the James Norris, of course. Calder went to Le Cavalier, so Parker Martinez did not win it. Guy Supra, another Vezina, and another Jennings. Selkie goes to Duke Silver. I think that's the first time I've ever had a player, a simulated player, who wins the Selkie. It's always the same, like Bergeron, Barkov, O'Reilly. So for Duke Silver to win the Selkie and be such an offensive threat is a huge applause to him. Of course, the Lindsay also goes to Ellis Anderson. And hey, we won the Calder Cup down in San Diego. Unfortunately, Miko Ranson and the original Honolulu Husky captain goes out after this season at the age of 39. He played a good number of years in Dallas, I think six seasons or so, no, five seasons. Then he played one in Columbus as well. Still putting up great numbers, but he had such good seasons with us in Honolulu, our first overall pick back in the fantasy draft. 1,475 points for him. Mackenzie Blackwood also retires. Great. He was somehow a really great goalie in this franchise mode. Our first pick, Felipe Weeks, medium top six, two-way forward. And we also drafted Ernest Vandenbush. 
another first round pick, medium top 4D defensive defenseman. And unfortunately, we had to sh trade Quinn Shannon. We love Quinn Shannon, five star shooting power forward, but he really fits the third line and he wasn't great for the top six. He just he started to go off. I know he's still a great season at 61 points, but I wasn't able to pay that contract. So we got a prospect and a first from the Avalanche, which allowed us to go ahead and sign Gail Jennings to a nice contract, two years at 5.750, and Hunter for two years at 2.6. And then we got Guy Supre locked up long-term for seven years at 8.750. But like I said earlier, when uh, as the years go on, the contracts become insane. Lane Quick at 79 overall wanted 3.5. He ended up getting... Uh, we got an offer sheet from the Canucks, so I let him go, and I got a second-round pick for him. Thank you very much. And then another offer sheet. Check this one out. A first and a third for Kaigorodov. Are you serious? Five years at 5.845 for an 80 overall defenseman? Yeah, you can have him. Thanks for the first and third, St. Louis. Now in year number 18, Pittis, Silver, Pellick, a great first line, 94, 90, 93. Trevor Wong, second line center at 89 overall, close to overtaking Silver in terms of ability, being a couple of years younger than him, 89 overall as a second line center with Marsha and Hunter. Hunter now promoted there, the playmaker between two snipers. He has four-star shooting, so hopefully he can do well. Keanu Cade Reeves here on the third line with his five-star shooting. Gail Jennings is growing very nicely at an 85 overall playmaker on the third line. McLean, a third-round pick of ours, who has five-star shooting with Sophilas, a three-and-a-half-star defensive uh, third-round pick, and Nylander, a sixth-round pick, all in our fourth line. Lindback Anderson give it still the plus five, even though Anderson at the age of 35. Manino, he's been here for a while now, One one, two, three, four, five, six, seven straight seasons. Doesn't put up the points, but he definitely get the plus minus. He's with Parker Martinez, who has, has two, who has had two crazy seasons for us, but is now on an expiring deal. Louis Jacques from the Canadians and Tom O'Dell, a third round pick of ours, make up the defense, the third pair of defense. Guy Supre, 88 overall, is our starting goalie. Kravchenko backs us up as an 83. One more year for him at a uh, sub million dollar deal. In the AHL, Urkamps, our first round pick from 2034 centering that top line in the season we won another president's trophy to no one's surprise winning 60 14 and 8 power play of 35.1 best in the league and a penalty kill of 82.9 1 2 3 4 5 sixth best in the nhl i will take that for the special teams ezra pittis 112 points he shattered his career high well broke his career high from the year previous Going from 105 to 112, great season from him. Duke Silver at the age of 36, still puts up 53 goals. Skylar Pellick, 100 points for him. Is that a career high? It's his second best of his career. 38 goals might be a career high in goals, I'm not sure I didn't see. Trevor Wong, 86 points. Ellis Anderson, starting to slow down a little bit, but 75 points, still a great season for the 36-year-old offensive defenseman. Marshawn, 71. That is his new, not his new career high, but uh, staying around his new threshold of about 70 points. Gail Jennings, that was a career high for him, 69 points. He's turning into a little Trevor Wong, 8 goals, 61 assists. Parker Martinez, 64 points! Sorry, this is his second season after last season's great numbers. This is his second season. Puts up fantastic points. Reeves scores 32 goals down that third line with the five-star shooting. He is a monster. Keanu Reeves just really ripping it. Just love those numbers as well. He has three years left, uh, two more years after this one. Lynn back, another 40 point season. I think that's a career, ties his career high, plus 41. There's everybody's stats. Supra goes 50, 12, and 5 with five shutouts, 9 12 save percentage, 2.43 goals against. Kravchenko was a good backup, 10 4 and 3. Pittis led the NHL in points, and Silver was right behind him at 106. Tied with Jinkyo Chong, who at the age of 36 as well, scoring 106 points. Looking at defensive stats, we had Anderson and Martinez, two of the top four scorers in defensive points. In the playoffs, we swept the Buffalo Sabres. We beat the Coyotes in five. We beat the Kings in five. We beat the Wild in six. And we swept the Buffalo Sabres including some overtime drama from Mats Lindback sniping the overtime winner in Game 4. And oh, look at that. It's a classic EA glitch where the Anaheim Ducks were all wearing Ducks jerseys. So thanks, EA. There's Reed Pitton shaking hands with Silver and Wong in our Anaheim Duck jerseys. Skylar Pellick won the Conn Smythe Trophy, having a good playoff run. I'll talk about that in just a second. And now here's our random captain 
who's going to come and get the Stanley Cup in just a second. Here he is. No clue who this is. He's raising the cup as, uh, as someone we've never seen before. Biggs, his last name. I don't know where he came from, but okay. No Duke Silver. There's Supra. There's Pelic. And here's the team pick. There's Biggs, the captain, right in the middle. Duke Silver right over his shoulder. If you pause the video, Duke Silver is right over his shoulder, also as captain. Anderson probably should have won the con Smythe, but because he was taken out of the game for Biggs, it went to Pelic, but that really doesn't make any sense at all. So Anderson probably should have won the con Smythe, but it went to Pelic instead. Martinez had crazy numbers as well. Guy Supre had a great record, going 16-4-0 with two shutouts. Stanley Cup champions, as we know. President's Trophy, like always. Ezra Pittis won the Art Ross. Hart also goes to Ezra Pittis. Guy Supre wins his third straight Vezina and Jennings. And of course, Lindsay also goes to Pittis. In the retirements, Massimiliano Bio and Johnny B the first created players to call it a career. I'm going to go into more of these stats at the end of the video, but just to say 1,180 goals for him. Great career. Went out on a 62 goal season. Spent his whole career with the Capitals, putting up 1,759 points with over 1,500 penalty minutes as well. He had some decent playoff runs. Johnny Beats put up 1,499 with 910 goals. The five foot nine sniper spent his whole career with the Flyers. Not, uh, not um, too much success, unfortunately, in the playoffs, as you didn't see much. The other created player, two oh, sorry, quickly, Zadina, and also Hughes retires. Quinn Hughes goes out with 1,100 points, over 1,100 points, spending much of his career with us. But the other created player to go out, as I wanted to say, after Yamamoto here, another former Husky, is Jeremiah Gupta, the defensive defenseman, the king of India, some call him. 88 overall. He goes out with the Blackhawks, spent his whole career with them and the Bruins, I believe, scoring 564 points in 1,474 games. Sadly, nothing ever happened in the playoffs for him. Only played 39 games across his entire career. For the retirements of the goalies, there you have it. Stuart Skinner, all those guys. In the draft, we went and got this guy, Brent Foster, with our 17th overall pick. He ended up being medium top six, 65 overall. And our other pick was a medium top four defenseman. Now, since we had so many resources and picks and prospects, this is the time where I said, we got to help out this team and we need to use our uh, assets to our advantage. So I traded Ezra Pittis and a third round pick for a medium lead prospect on the Coyotes. And then I traded that prospect back to the Coyotes along with two medium lead prospects of our own and two second round picks for Pittis retaining 4.75 million for the next five years or four seasons after this one. So four more seasons of Ezra Pittis at 8 million. The prospect we gave up, medium elite, 72 overall, 21 years old. He didn't really score many points in the AHL. I didn't really like his stats either. So I thought that's why I'd move him. We couldn't keep Parker Martinez as he signed a four-year, 11-plus million dollar deal with the Stars, but we did get Boudin, Stephen Boudin's the offensive defenseman from the Sharks, on a deal of four years, 9.750. Going into year number 19 now, classic first line, Pittis, Silver, and Pellick. Duke Silver on the last year of his deal at the age of 36 now, starting to go a bit down overall. Pellick, three years left on his deal at 12.8. Sheldon Marshall with Trevor Wong and Gabriel Hunter on the second line. Reeves, Jennings, and Nylander. Jennings, last year of his deal as well, so some big contracts with Silver and Jennings coming to a close. Jennings, our future at the at the, at the center position. Erkamp's our first round pick in 2034, seventh overall, is now our uh, fourth line center. Mats Lindback, also an expiring deal, so that's going to be tough. Menino is there with Budenz, who we got, the offensive defenseman. They get a plus one. Third pair, Ragnarsson and Boyd. Ellis Anderson still getting it up at an 88 overall. Guy Supre and Kelly Nornquist, the high elite prospect from the third round pick, are our goalies for this season. Supre looks great at 88 overall. And boys, 65, 16, and 1. How's that for a record? 4.27 goals uh, four per game. The second best power play in the NHL. Our penalty kill of 82 point one was tied for fourth best in the NHL and you know what that means 103 points there had to be some big boys scoring out there Trevor Wong a career high in points at the age of 34 blows his previous high 
Uh, it doesn't blow it out of the water, but blows what he's been doing the last few years out of the water. 103 points for Trevor Wong. Ezra Pittis gets 101. He's That's his third straight season of 100 points or more. Duke Silver, 98. Pelic, 95. Marshawn, 91. That's a career high for him by 18 points. Quick maths. Ellis Anderson gets 84 points at the age of 37. Jennings, 74. That's a career high for him, continuing to be a playmaking monster. Budens, 56. Reeves with uh, 29 goals, Lindback a plus 63, fourth line looking good, Menino plus 54, everyone looking nice, Urkamps in his rookie season, nothing much, but Supra, 53-14-0, 9 shutouts, 9-12 save percentage, 2.38 goals against average, what a year for him, and that's enough for the Stanley Cup, boys, we swept the Tampa Bay Lightning, and we swept the Kings, we beat the Coyotes in 5, we beat the Sharks in 5, and we just once again took down a big team in the Stanley Cup Finals with a 5-2 win in our fourth game in that series. Another Cup win on the road and another Stanley Cup for Honolulu sweeping the Cup Finals. Trevor Wong won the Conn Smythe. What a year for him. Gets a career high in points and the Conn Smythe at 37 years old. What a king Trevor Wong is. Then, of course, Duke Silver raises another Stanley Cup with the Huskies. Another deserved win for the captain. Mats Lindback gets to raise it. He's been here since the start. Trevor Wong gets an extended run. Guy Supra raises it as one of the best goalies of all time that we've had. And if NHL history wouldn't be surprised. Gather round, boys, for the big picture. I, want, I kept it a bit longer this time. Look at Urkamps here, 45, beside uh, Duke Silver. Looks like Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Trevor Wong, 31 points for him. Anderson, 25. Silver, 21. Down to an 86 overall. Great season. A great playoff run from everybody. Really chipping in. A lot of great plus minuses as well. Supra, 16-2-0 with one shutout. 9-17 save percentage. 2.30 goals against average. Maybe a case for a con Smythe. Stanley Cup champions, of course, and the President's Trophy, as we always know. The heart to Trevor Wong. Trevor Wong, 37 years old. He wins the heart trophy. Uh, Ellis Anderson, another James Norris. It's just been renamed it the Anderson Chong Award. That's all that these guys, uh, it's all, the only guys who win it. Vezina, once again, the fourth straight season of Jennings and Vezina for Guy Supre. And Ted Lindsay also going to Trevor Wong, which is fantastic. In the retirement, some big names going out like Nathan McKinnon with over 1,800 points. Another created player retiring as well in D'Angelo Vickers. But look at Line A Hughes, Vesa Linen. Vickers, an offensive defenseman, 75 overall, 1,044 points for him. Pavel Kovalev, one of our best players. He retires. So did Moritz Sider, Kevin Hart, Kevin Hart, Carter Hart, and Uko Pekalukunen. In the draft, we selected a medium top six center. And then, unfortunately, in the offseason, we had to trade Manino with that big contract. He's been such a steady uh, face for us on the defense on that second pair never gets more than like 20 points but look at those plus minuses almost a plus 400 because he didn't get those with Detroit that's for sure we got Connor Homer kind of like a poor man's um uh, Fred Menino same thing so it cost us more prospects but it allowed us to free up some money Year number 20, boys, we made it. Where The lines are not really great chemistry-wise, but we're still up here. Pitt is silver, Pelic on that top line. Marshawn, Wong, and Keanu, Cade, Reeves on the second line. No plus, but still the playmaker with two snipers between them. Reeves has been flying with his five-star shooting, and he's doing very well. McLean with Jennings and Urkamps. Jennings up to an 87 overall now. Soon to take over for Silver and or Wong, I believe. So Philos, a good fourth line center with Long and Markstrom, new fourth liners. Lindback and Anderson, both down to 85, but with a plus five, keeps them at a 90 overall. Homer and Budenz, the offensive and defensive, give it a plus three. And then Bomick, a seventh round pick, 216th overall, second to last pick in the draft. He's 83 overall now. He has like four star defense or something, I missed it. He's playing with Knight, who has uh, who's 78 overall. He was a draft pick of ours as well. Suplis at an 88 overall. He's locked up long term. But Norquist at an 87 has two years left at a million. So we have, at least this season and next season, a very good goaltending. And boys, it is a new franchise record in 2039 with 66 wins, 11 losses, and 5 overtime losses. What a season. Great scoring, great goaltending. We were 87.4% on the power play and 35% on the power play. Sorry, 87 on the penalty kill. So we had best special teams in the NHL. Ezra Pittis, 108 points. Marshawn Wong, 104. Anderson, 100. At the age of 38, hits triple digits. 
three players going 100 points or more. Ezra Pittis, his fourth straight season of over 100 points between 101 and 112 the last four years. Sheldon Marsha, career high by 15 points. At, sorry, by 13 points at 104. Trevor Wong, aging like a fine wine, 35 years old. He scores 94 assists, a career high in assists by 10. And he scores 104 points along with it, like we said. Uh, Ellis Anderson, 100 points. He's back in the triple digits. Hasn't been there in a couple of years. Skylar Pellick at a 94-point season. Also, Ellis Anderson, plus 77, by the way. Duke Silver, 81. Uh, Jennings, 76. Reeves, 35 goals, 66 points. Boudens, McLean scored a lot of goals as a third liner, Earth Camps, and so on and so forth. Supra, 43, 8 and 4, 8 shutouts, 9 11 save percentage, 2.36. And look at Nordquist, 23, 3 and 1 with two shutouts, 1.91 goals against average, 929 save percentage. We have two elite caliber goalies, and they really showed off this year. Uh, Ezra Pittis, one point behind the NHL lead. Marshawn led the league in goals. And look at this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, top 10 of the NHL of plus minus, all on our team. That is just bazonkas. Unfortunately, we lost in the conference finals to the Winnipeg Jets in seven games. It was a tough playoff run. We beat the Hawks in five, we beat the Oilers in five, but then we lost in seven to the Jets, who lost to the Lightning in six. In the playoffs, of course, Trevor Wong scored 24 points in 17 games. He is a playoff machine with point totals like that. Reeves had 19, Marshawn 19, Pittis Silver, Boudens, everyone really put it together. Supre wasn't great, 11-3-3, one shutout, 9-10 save percentage, 2.44 goals against. Definitely wouldn't say it was his fault though. Of course, President's Trophy with those 66 wins. Ellis Anderson, another heart trophy for him. He just keeps, just like Trevor Wong, aging like a fine wine. Of course, also gets the James Norris. Trevor Wong won the Lady Bing, which is very nice to see, very gentlemanly of him. Guy Supre wins a fifth consecutive Vesna and Jennings, this year sharing the Jennings with Norris. Quist. Ted Lindsay, of course, going to Anderson as well. And like we said earlier, Sheldon Marshall winning the Morris Richard. In the retirements, Rory Cherry, a huge retirement. Him and Mikey Bruno, two of our created snipers. Over 1,900 points for him and almost 1,200 goals. He was a thorn in our side in Nashville. Mikey Bruno, over 1,000 goals, 1,840 points. And then not to be forgotten, Sveshnikov, Eichel, over 1,700 points for them. Crazy careers for them. And Alessandro Girante, another retired player. He was a two-way defenseman, scored 1,057 points in 1,600 games between the Wild and the Jets. Cole Perfetti retired. He spent four seasons on Buffalo, doing pretty well there. But of course, his golden years were with us in Honolulu. Sandro Tommy, the first created goaltender to retire, getting 669 wins, 515 losses, retired at an 81 overall, 59 shutouts, 904 save percentage. Aldfelt also retiring. In the first round, we drafted this guy, Kieran, a two-way defender at 29th overall, who was low elite, 65 overall. And get your tissues out, boys, because in the offseason, we have to trade Matt Slynn back. 82 overall, still very capable, a plus-minus king, four-star defense, but making 9.3, he would have wanted about that, and he didn't want the extension, so we had to move him. 555 points in 1,385 games in Ironman, played almost every single game that he'd been with us, a plus 694 in his career, really going to miss him. He's always around that 40-30 point mark, a career high of a plus 73. Hits, blocks, takeaways, he was always there. We went out and got Joe Swanson, Ron Swanson, Duke Silver's son, AK, also known as, 80 overall defensive defenseman prospect, and he'll slot into our defense in Lindback's absence. Year number 21, on the first line, Trevor Wong has become our new first line center at 86 overall. He is between Pellick and Pittis, 92-93. Jennings, too good for the third line. Don't want him at center yet because Duke Silver's there, so he's on the second line. Lots of expiring deals this season. Silver, Wong, Pellick, and Marsha, all on expiring deals. Jennings, 88, going to play the wing just for the season. Reeves with Urkamps and Markstrom on the third line. Long, Sophilis, Sophilis and Eaton on the fourth. Defense, Homer and Anderson getting that plus five. Homer's been here for a while now, well, a few seasons. Locked him up for three more. And on the second pair, sorry, uh, Anderson is also locked up. 
long term. On the second pair, it's Budenz and Bomic with the plus one, and Swanson and Knight get a plus one as well on the third pair. Goalie Sitch now this season, Supra and Nordquist. We have Supra at 88 locked up long term, but Nordquist is 89, high elite, and younger, so that causes a bit of an issue, and he is on an expiring deal though, so what are we going to do with him? But for the season, we have two fantastic goalies, and it helped us big time as we went 57, 7, and 8 to win another President's Trophy. Power play was second best in the NHL. Penalty kill was not great, uh, to say the least, to be honest. It was pretty low on the on the uh, spectrum at 78.9%. Skylar Pellick, though, did score 100 points. His, uh, uh, not tying his career highest, but around that area, 101 is his career high. Not often he leads the team in points, so that's nice. Pittis and Wong both scoring 93 points. Jennings scoring 79, a new career high. He's been in the 70s for a bit now. Anderson and Silver both getting 70 and 69 points respectively at the age of 39. Reeves scores 35. Marshall, a, low, a bit of a low year at 66. You can see the rest of the point totals there. Between the pipes now, Nordquist played most of the games, being a higher overall, 34, 13, and 4. But Supre had better numbers, I think, 23, 4, and 4. Six shutouts, 918 save percentage. I would have said that Supre was the man to go with at 2.24 goals against average, but... Norquist had the higher overall, so we got more games. In the Stanley Cup playoffs, we won another Stanley Cup, sweeping the Minnesota Wild, beating the Coyotes in six, beating the Avalanche in six, and then beating the Capitals in six, the team that swept us a few years ago in the Stanley Cup finals, to win our eighth Stanley Cup in 21 years, just a little bit more than a cup every third year or so. All the boys celebrating, big smiles all around. Another cup on the road, by the way, but I wore our home jerseys anyways. Skylar Pellick wins his second Conn Smythe, Big handshake with Gary, looking good with the A on his jersey. Crazy how we always win the cup on the road, but you know what I said, I want the home jerseys, I gotta see him. Duke Silver, come get another cup, Bellow. I believe that is seven as captain, but his eighth ring. Big, big smiles for the smoothest saxophone player on the planet. Homer gets it after he came in the deal for Menino, and then Keanu Reeves gets it next. Cade Reeves, he looks like Keanu Reeves, look at his face. Keanu Reeves, a sniper. Nordquist raises the cup. He was our starter throughout the playoffs. And a nice EA glitch in the top left corner. It's not your phone, it's EA. A nice black uh, box glitch throughout uh, the celebration there. Pellick scored 32 points, so definitely earned it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven players, a point per game or more in the playoffs. So really a good year for points, that's for sure. 32 for Pellick. He deserved the con Smythe. Uh, Nordquist, 16-4-2 and two with two shutouts, 909 save percentage, 2.7 goals against, nothing too crazy. So another Stanley Cup for us, that is three of the last four, another President's Trophy. And ironic that and in such a great season, our only award was Nordquist and Supre sharing the Jennings. In the retirements, more creative players calling it a career. Mongo and Klingenberg both calling it a career. 78 overall for Mongo. Klingenberg, 74. 1,700 points uh, for Mongo. 1,000 goals and 1,600 points for Klingenberg. Mats Lindback also retiring after his one season on the Sharks. He got 13 points, negative 23. So it's time to call it a career. Lavin was our first, uh, our best selection at 38th overall, an offensive defenseman. And we also had to trade Budenz to the Detroit Red Wings, or his rights, I should say. As you remember, I just said that we had a lot of expiring deals, so we didn't have the money to re-sign him. We also traded Calais Nordquist with three prospects for an offensive defenseman, Marco Hartekainen from the Capitals, a great player, going to a rival in the Eastern Conference, but we just didn't have the ability to re-sign Nordquist. This was the end of the, this was actually the trade in the end. And we are ready to roll with Supra as the lone goalie headed into year number 22. Buckle up for year number 22 because it is a doozy. First line, Pittis, Wong, Pellick, Silver, Jennings, Marshall on the second. Silver, 39 years old at an 80 overall. We have Ennis on the third line, a former sixth round pick of ours who we found back in free agency. He's been around the NHL, Vegas, Chicago, putting up decent numbers. We picked him back up. Uh, he's been gone. He never played a game for us, actually. But now we have him. Urkamps at our third line center. Keanu, Cade, Reeves. Fotinos, Keith, Sof 
Felis Fotinos, we picked him up in free agency as well. The plus my the chemistry looks good at plus one, plus one, plus three. Alice Anderson at 39 years old is still an 83 with the plus five. Swanson, Hartkanenin, uh, Penzek, a former sixth round pick of ours. Guy Supre at 88 overall, uh, still three years left on his deal. And Ty Curry, a medium league prospect between the pipes backing him up. Another President's Trophy going 60, 17, and 5. Our power play was 29.8%, third best in the NHL. First time we're not in the top two in years. And our penalty kill of 82.2 was good enough for third best in the NHL. Uh, we had a three-way tie for the point totals with Pittis, Marshall, and Pellick all scoring 94 points. Ezra Pittis hadn't scored 45 goals in a very long time. He's gotten the points, but not the goals, ever since 2029-30. So a big season for Pittis. Marshall 94, like we said. Pellick as well. Wong, 84 points for the 37-year-old playmaker. Just, as we said, a fine wine. Duke Silver, at 40 years old, 79 overall, goes point per game. His highest total in the last three years as well. Erkamp, 74 points from him. The former 7th overall pick, a career high. Uh, Jennings, 70 points. Reeves with 40 goals and 69 points. Ellis Anderson, 40 years old, puts up another 64-point season, a plus 56 Homer, Ellis, Keith, everybody really chipped in for another great season. Supla, 47, 13, and 3. Five shutouts, 9 and 3 save percentage. Not his best numbers, but still good enough. Jin Kyo Chung, by the way, 70 points at 40 years old. Now in the Chicago Blackhawks from South Korea, the king. And of course, in the playoffs, we won another Stanley Cup, taking down the Florida Panthers. It was a roller coaster. We beat the Blues in six. We beat the, the Coyotes in seven. We beat the Wild in seven. I'm pretty sure, guaranteed one, but I think both of those game sevens were overtime wins. And then we took down the Florida Panthers in six games, winning five to one in that last game. Another great Stanley Cup for the boys here. At 40 years old for Silver and um, Anderson. The con Smythe going to Trevor Wong, the second of his career. The old man still has it in him, still has the vision and the IQ to capture another con Smythe. Gary looking as young as ever with Big Trevor. And then Duke Silver come over one more time with that mustache and that smile. I think that is his, what, his ninth Stanley Cup as captain, something like that? as he raises it over his head proudly. And at the age of 40, is it the final run for him? It might just be, and he gives it to his son, John Swanson. They call him Joe Swanson, but in the show, we know his son is John Swanson. The torch is passed and the story is official. Duke Silver, Ron Swanson, passes the cup to Swanson. Very symbolic and beautiful. There's Ennis, there's Supre. Gather round, boys. Take a picture, it's a beautiful one. Silver, Pellick, everyone is in it. Wong scored 35 points in the playoffs, definitely worthy. 302 playoff points in 296 playoff games. Pittis with 34 was very worthy as well. Anderson still went 24 points. Silver had 17, all the point totals there. Very good show for many people. Supre, not the greatest record, but great numbers. Six shutouts out of his 16 wins. And we know we won the Stanley Cup right there. Second in a row, four of our last five. And I believe that was Duke Silver's ninth cup overall, but just eighth as captain. President's Trophy once again for the 16th straight season. The current NHL record for like most all time is six from like the Red Wings. We have 16 in a row. Does that make sense? Guy Supre is back to winning the Vezina and the Jennings. All is right in the world. But after all those point totals and another Stanley Cup, get the tissues because at the age of 40, Duke Silver and Ellis Anderson both retire and so does Trevor Wong at the age of 37, I believe. 2,088 points for Duke Silver, 1,061 goals. Ellis Anderson as a defenseman put up 1,846 points. Duke Silver, look at his playoff stats, 349 points in 310 games with nine Stanley Cups. Ellis Anderson, 64 points this season, 348 points, 313 games. Trevor Wong, at the age of 38, he retires still in 85 overall. We had him since the beginning of his career. He was drafted by St. Louis. We traded for him. Started off his career a bit slow, 40, 50 points. Then he exploded with 70, 80, 90, 100 plus, 1,406 goal uh, points with over 1,100 assists in over 1,400 games. 
He was still signed, but he calls it a career. Ellis Anderson was still signed as well, but it's going to free up a lot of money. $9 million, $5 million, $8 million. Those three retirements are going to free up a lot of money. When you think of the Honolulu Huskies, of all the names that come to mind, these are definitely three of them, and they all retire this season. A big heartbreak in terms of losing the core of our team, the leadership, and such great uh, point scorers, legends on the team. We'll go into their stats a bit more in depth at the end of this. But all three of them retiring with nine Stanley Cup rings and thousands of points between them. So thank you for all of your service, boys. We're really going to miss you here in Honolulu on the island. And that's why the new core is going to have to take over. And speaking of new people, we made a huge deal with the Senators at the draft. We traded Gail Jennings back to the Senators, a team that we got him from. He was going to be our future at center. I love Gail Jennings. He was amazing. 70 plus points, playmaker every season. But it was just, I couldn't pass this up. Look at his point totals, 480 points with us in 656 games. He'd been with us for a while, but I could not pass up the opportunity for the first overall pick because look at the player, the caliber of the player that is available. It was a big cost, but it was worth it. Michael Berglund, medium franchise playmaker, similar to Wayne Gretzky. This guy is like a McDavid. He's going to be amazing. He's a playmaker. Great stats in an A-plus league. We drafted him first overall. 83 overall medium franchise right out of the draft with five-star puck skills, five-star, uh, sorry, four-star puck skills, four-star skating, and all that great stuff. And now speaking of offer sheets, once again, we lost Bomick, unfortunately, our seventh round pick, who was playing defense. Three years at 7.4, way too much, but thanks for the first and the third Minnesota as we head into season number 23. In year number 23, with Silver and Anderson gone, the new leadership core is Captain Pellick with Pittis and Marsha as the alternates. New first line is Pittis, Urkamps, and Marsha. He's on the last year of his deal, but he is a good playmaker. It doesn't really fit the line fit, but Skylar Pellick as well. Seven years, we have him locked up to the end of his career. Berglund, the rookie, is at center with Ennis on his wing. Foster, Keanu, Cade, Reeves, and Keith. Reeves also on the last year of his deal. So Pellick's taking a lot of money, but I think he'll be worth it. Fotinos, Korobov, Sofilis, Duda, and Conroy are the first pair D with a plus three. We got Parker Martinez back on the team, signed up for three years, just over 10 million. And with Homer, it's always also a plus three. Speaking of money and positions and everything, we have Brent Foster on an entry-level deal who was a rookie for us. Uh, we said Keeves was expiring. Ennis, he's only 81 overall, but good shooting. Uh, on the first pair, like we said, he's playing with Conroy to get the plus three, like I said. Martinez and Homer also get that plus three, and Swanson with Hartikainen gets the plus one. In Nets, Guy Supka is down to an 86 for some reason, but is still going to play like a monster. Braxton Tavares, a draft pick of ours, is backing him up. And you can see that it was no problem for Guy Supka and the team going 59-19-4 for another President's Trophy. Just keep him coming. Back, back him into my backyard. Best power play in the NHL. Penalty kill of 78.4 was not the worst, but near the bottom. I've been rolling with like the same defense lines for years, just with Pittis and Pellick on the wings and everything. They haven't changed much. much. Pellick down to an 84 overall, but leads the team in points and gets a career high in goals by 13 with 60 goals. 95 points and 60 goals for the old man, our captain now. Urkamp 78, Marchand 77. Ennis scored 32 goals as an 81 overall and 74 points. Reeves 43 goals. Pittis getting old. He's still got 72. Berglund in his rookie season scores 60 67 points. Martinez scores 62. Welcome back. Duda 61 and all these other guys. Conroy did well for a defensive defenseman. Homer and the fourth line kept pitching in as well. Supra 51, 14 and 3. Three shutouts. 908 save percentage. 2.53 goals against. Backup did well. And we swept our way to the Stanley Cup. We had a little bit of trouble in the first round taking down the Wild in six. But then we swept the Flames, swept the Golden Knights and swept the Carolina Hurricanes for one of our most dominant Stanley Cup runs in franchise history. As we won another Stanley Cup on the road. We haven't won a Stanley Cup at home. I don't even know ever if we have. It was like in year number 10 or something. So like over a decade ago. All the boys jumping up and down. Skylar Pellick wins the Conn Smythe. His third Conn Smythe. Now a new franchise leader in Conn Smythe wins. The captain. First year as captain. 10th Stanley Cup. Nine as captain. What am I saying? First as captain. And then he goes to get the Stanley Cup right there. Raise it high. Gary looking young for the 2040s as Pellick as captain. He's been here his whole career. 
played so long and so hard, and that's the first time he gets to raise the cup as the captain of the Huskies. What a dominant force in this team. 60 goals and a con Smythe. Erkamps, our first round pick in 2034. Homer, who came here for uh, Fred Menino. Guy Supre, another Stanley Cup, that dominating, dominate, dominative goaltender continues to roll. Pelic, 27 points, definitely worth getting the uh, con Smythe. Erkamps, Berlin, 22 in his rookie year. Duda, 21. Parker Martinez got 13, so on and so forth. Guy Supre had a 16-2-0 record, one shutout, 9-15 save percentage, 2.46 goals against. Stanley Cup, of course, our third straight, another three-peat for us here in Honolulu, another President's Trophy that is now 17 in a row, just keep them coming. Skylar Pellick won the Lady Bing and the Morris Richard, no awards in the goalie category, but speaking of Skylar Pellick, he calls it a career after this. This one. The last two created players also retiring. Keenan Johnson, one goal away from a thousand, over 1,900 points for the Canadians center who finished his career with Pittsburgh. Just played one season there. What a monster in the Montreal Canadiens. They, that was the first line center they needed. One, winning the Selkie year in and year out. Jinkyo Chong, just shy of 1,700 points. He was the only guy pretty much year in and year out who gave um, Ellis Anderson a run for his money, playing with the Avalanche for almost his entire career. But Skylar Pellick, he played 1,547 games, all with us, scoring 695 goals. We drafted him first overall. We traded the Coyotes, Jonathan Drouet, and a bag of pucks for the first overall pick. We drafted Skylar Pellick. He scored 1,618 points, a plus 684. Our captain in our final season scored 60 goals to go out and got his third con Smythe. What an absolute tank. 324 points in 309 career playoff games. We are really going to miss Skylar Pellick on this team. And he's going to leave a huge hole in the goal scoring. Scrolling down, other players who retired. Barker, uh, Gail Redden, a former 7th round pick of ours. We traded him away when he had done nothing with us. 16 points, 6 points. And he blew up on the Penguins and the Blackhawks. So good for him. Great career. Other guys, Kozevnikov, Genze, uh, Oscar Janssen, all former players of ours. Giftopoulos. Uh, between the pipes, uh, goalies retired, no one special. And in the draft, we drafted Timu Toivonen with the 18th overall pick, similar, similar to Theo Fleury, a medium top six sniper. So nice to have that. And then once again, the defenseman that just wants so much money, Joe Swanson, going back to the team that drafted him, the San Jose Sharks, six years at 7.36. We couldn't afford that. So we will once again take the compensation of a first and a third. Year number 24, the penultimate season with Skylar Pelagon. Pittis is our new captain with Marshall and Reeves as the alternate. Reeves has been here for a long time, drafted by the Devils, but grew in our system. Pittis signed for another couple of years as our first line left winger. Berglund now in his second year is up to an 88. Marshall is signed at 14 million at a 92. Reeves, Urkamps, and Ennis on the second line. Keith, Sofilis, and Foster on the third. Fotinos, Korbev, and Stefan on the fourth. Sorry, on the third, then on the fourth. Parker Martinez and uh, Connor Homer, he had a plus five on the first pair. Conroy and Hart Kanan, Vandenbush and Kern on the third pair. Low overalls, first round pick of ours, and uh, Kern, yeah, both first round picks of ours. So they have the potential, just not quite there yet, but we have to fill somebody in. Guy Souple, last year of his deal in 87. Braxton Tavares, a fourth round pick of ours. And we get it done for another President's Trophy in 2043. 59-21-2 was our record. Power play, best in the NHL, 32.6. And penalty kill, 76.7, even worse than last year in the bottom. One, two, three, four, five. I think that's uh, is that eighth worst. I can't count fast enough. Sheldon Marshall, 95 points. Berglund in his sophomore season scored 95 as well. Sheldon just really putting the puck in the back of the net with 63 goals. Berglund, a great playmaker, tying the team lead. Parker Martinez, check this guy out. This guy's a sixth round pick. The five-star puck skills, the five-star shooting. He scores 94 points, even more than what he got when he was with Dallas. Crazy. Reeves scores 43. Ennis scores 32. He was a great pickup. Uh, Pittis still puts up 74 at the age of 34. The rest of the point totals there. 
Guy Supre went 42-17-1 with six shutouts. 902 save percentage, 2.77 goals against. Not his best year. Tavares did very well as a backup, 17-4-1. And, and man, Parker Martinez, leading NHL defenseman in points by a large margin. And Marsha leading the league in goals with 63. And it is back-to-back -back sweeps of the Hurricanes and a fourth straight Stanley Cup. The second time we do four straight in franchise history. It was very tight. We barely made it out of the first round and the second round winning those series in seven. But after that, it was smooth sailing as we swept the conference finals and the Stanley Cup finals. Another Stanley Cup on the road. Decided to wear our alternate jerseys. They're cursed. They're garbage. But we just got to see that pineapple. Look at the numbering, the color. I just went crazy with these. I said, you know what? Let's just win one cup with them. Parker Martinez wins the Con Smythe. What an absolute tank. Look at that hair. Look at that stash. What an absolute certified beautician. Love to see it. But yeah, another cup on the road. We haven't won at home in like ever. Ezra Pittis now as captain. That is his 11th Stanley Cup, his first as captain. He ties the NHL record with like Henry Richard, Henri Pocket Rocket Richard with 11 Stanley Cups. Ezra Pittis, what a absolute unstoppable mule. Keith raises the cup, the rookie, Stefan as well. Guy Supka gets to raise it with that 32. Look at that numbering with the, with the green around it. Gather round, take another pick, boys. Look at some of these beards and hair. Crazy hairstyles. Martinez scored 31 points in 22 games, plus 21. How's that for a con Smythe? Marshawn Berglund and even Ennis really scoring well uh, with the mid to high 20 point totals. Pittis with 18, uh, 85 overall now. And that's just really great to see that everyone chipped in. Like, oh, it's a year in and year out, boys. Guy Supre went 15, 5, and 1, 902 save percentage, 2.93 goals against. Not his greatest numbers, but hey, another ring on his finger, so he will take it. That is the second time in franchise history that we win four consecutive Stanley Cups in year number 25. We'll be trying to break the tie the NHL record of five in a row, but that's 11 total Cups, eight of them coming consecutively in four uh, Cup bursts. Another President's Trophy, of course. James Norris to Parker Martinez, he had to. Guy Supre didn't win the Vezina, but he won the Jennings, and then and like we said, Sheldon Marshall wins the Morris Richard. In the retirements, the absolute last created players call it a career. Roderick Cornell is the last skater at the age of 42. Almost 2,000 games played. Probably the NHL record. Five-star shooting he still had. He really still was ripping shots. Ended with a 50-point season. 994 points for his career. The defensive defenseman. He is the last skater to retire. And Eddie Fontaine is the last of the two goalies. 661 wins in his career. Over 1,300 games played. But that is the end of the created players in year 24. Year number 25, we have made it. Ezra Pittis is the last original Husky, but we have great players who are who have come through the ranks. Berglund's up to a 93, Marchand's at a 93, Astiel's a player that we got in free agency at 8.5, Reeves, Ennis has been a fantastic pickup, Urkamps, Keith, Foster, Karbev, Findlay, a former fifth round pick of ours now making the lineup, and Stefan makes out the fourth line. Martinez and Homer, Homer get the plus five on the top pair. Conroy and Gogolev, a prospect who was let go to free agency, who we signed from the Blues, is the second pair, and Kern and Drake on the third. Drake, an elite prospect. Supre, 86 overall, signed to a new contract. Israel Kelly, our former fifth round pick in 2030, we signed him up to be our backup. Another President's Trophy to end off the franchise mode, going 59, 16, and 7. Another year of having great special teams. Uh, not the top this year, but still 24.5% on the power play. And for the penalty, kill we did better at 81.8 percent being fourth best in the nhl blowing my mind once again is parker martinez putting up 101 points as a defenseman it's not crazy but as a guy who was drafted in the sixth round who was like 82 overall has just blown up that's 195 points over two seasons now Offensive defenseman, you can say that again. Five-star puck skills, five-star senses, five-star shooting. Only three-and-a-half-star defense. Uh, pure tank. Berglund, in his third season, put up a lot of penalty minutes as well. Five-star everything except for four-and-a-half-star physical. At five-foot-eight, four-and-a-half-star physical is crazy. And four-star shooting. Ennis was a great free agency pickup for us. Last three seasons, scoring 74-plus points. 90 points this season. Marsh 97. Reeves, 48 goals for him. Keanu Cade. Pittis, 36 years old, still gets 68 points for us. The old man still has it. Astles, Urkamps, Keith, 
everybody got down the line here. Great plus minuses as always. Supra, 51, 14, and 7. Five shutouts, 9, 12 save percentage, 2.46 goals against. Israel Kelly was a great backup, but unfortunately, we could not tie the NHL record with five straight cups. Once again, we fall short of that fifth. We beat the Coyotes in six, but then we fall to the Canucks in five, who then fall to the Predators in five, who go on to beat the Senators in seven to win the Stanley Cup. So it was another President's Trophy for us. Nonetheless, 19 consecutive President's Trophies. It has to be some sort of franchise mode record for just uh, doing medium sim and not playing any of the games. Heart goes to Parker Martinez. You love to see it. Also winning the James Norris for the second straight year. And even the Lady Bing. Why not? Guy Supre is back to winning the Vezina and the Jennings as he should be. And of course, Parker Martinez also winning the Ted Lindsay. In the playoff points, nothing too special. Astles had 15 points in 11 games. Reeves 11, Ennis 11, so on and so forth down the line there. Guy Supre went 5-5-1. Five, five, and one. 902 save percentage, 2.83 goals against average. And that is the end of the franchise mode, boys. We come to the end franchise mode complete after 25 years let's look at some of the things we didn't get to see such as Ezra Pittis's stats Ezra Pittis he played his entire career with us now at the age of 36 I don't think he would have retired yet probably had another couple seasons in him he scored 1518 points in 1470 games 627 goals a very well-rounded player could always count on him he had a couple seasons as captain here in Honolulu. In his playoff stats, he scored 147 goals, 187 assists, 337 points in 322 games with 11 Stanley Cup rings on his finger. He was the first overall pick from the LA Kings in 2026, but he never played a game for them because we traded for him right away. Still retired, well not retired, but ended off the franchise mode with five star shooting and four star senses and he was always a penalty kill fixture for us. Looking at other players, we want to see their final stats. Sheldon Marsha, he played his entire career with us as well. 933 points in 983 games. The last few seasons really blowing up in terms of going over a point per game, so he would have finished well over a point per game, I think, by the time he retired. 526 goals for him in the playoffs was also a big performer putting up 201 points in 211 games lots of rings for him Guy Supka putting up numbers that uh, are arguably my best goalie in franchise mode history in 645 games all with us he went 476 124 and 35 with 61 shutouts 61 shots already by the age of 32, 909 save percentage and goals against average. Look at that, 2.49. Really fantastic numbers for Guy Supre, a second round pick of ours who we knew would be our eventual starter. In the playoffs, going 112, 39, and 6. 12 shutouts, 908 save percentage, 2.64 goals against average in 161 NHL playoff starts. Now we got to look at Damian Palmieri. Our line fits in the last years weren't that great, but I could never fire Damian Palmieri. This guy was a C minus rated coach. We hired him. He became A plus rated. He got A's for everything except for coach influence. And look at this record 1,028 wins, 274 losses. 92 overtime losses, 16 President's Trophies for him, all coming consecutively, of course, and 11 Stanley Cups. Uh, it's just unbelievable what he did with this team. The best coach that I've ever had, probably. He's up there with Gilbert Hull, the coach that I had on the Anaheim Ducks franchise mode. Just unbelievable numbers. Now comes the best part, in my opinion, going over all the stats from the entire franchise mode, starting with all the awards that our players won with us. So there's like Quinn Hughes, for example, who won awards with other teams, the, the Hurricanes. But we're just going to look at all awards from 2019 to 2044 that were won with the Huskies. So Maximilian Kress, funny enough, is the only coach of ours to win the Jack Adams. Damian Palmieri, zero Jack Adams. But who cares, right? Kress wins the Jack Adams. Ilya Samsonov is a great goalie of ours, winning the Jennings in 2026. You can just pause and read this yourself. I'm just going to quickly run through them. Skylar Pellick won the Hart and Ted Lindsay in 2028. Samsonov, Vezina, and Jennings for three straight years. Sorry, for two straight years back to back in 2028, 2029. Di Pietro sharing it with him in 2028. Lee Sweeney then swooped in and won the Vezina and Jennings in 2030. Saul Bentley, the Jennings in 2032. Eli Tolvin, the Lady Bing in 2034. And then continuing the trend of our goalies, Stephen Beck wins the Vezina and Jennings in 2034 as well. In 2035, 2044 now, Ezra Pittis won the Art Ross, Hart, and Ted Lindsay, a huge year in 2037. 
Trevor Wong tried to do it himself, but won the Hart and Ted Lindsay in 2038, as well as the Lady Bing in 2039. Callie Nordquist won the Jennings in 2039. Sheldon Marshall winning the Morris Richard as well in 2039. Big year that year. Skylar Pellock then won the Lady Bing and the Morris Richard in 2042. That's pretty hard to do. And then Sheldon Marshall closed it off with another Morris Richard in 2043. I'm sure we would have won even more awards after this season, such as another Vesna for Supla and everything. Speaking of those players, now here are the good ones. Here are the juicy ones. Of our best players in the franchise's history, let's run through it. Duke silver the created player who we got last in the fantasy draft ended up winning the calder in 2020 two art ross trophies for leading nhl in points three hearts and three ted Lindsays as the league's mvp and one selkie as the best defensive forward now those aren't world shattering awards or anything but just to say that he was so consistent he won the heart in 2023 and then he won it again in 2031 just so consistent year in and year out a monster but we got to look at ellis anderson I picked him up from the Nashville Predators, and we just never looked back. Thank you, Nashville. Can't say it enough. He only won one Art Ross in 2026. But as a defenseman, he won five Hart Trophies over a span of 10 years, as well as five Ted Lindsay's. 2029 to 2039, five Hearts in 10 years. And then look at this, 12 James Norris Trophies consecutively from 2026 to 2032, then three in a row from 2034 to 2036, and then again in 38 and 39. So from 2026 to 2039, he won 12 James Norris trophies and even two Lady Bings. Very difficult for a defenseman to win a, a James Norris and a Lady Bing. So just crazy numbers from Alice Anderson. We'll get into their points in a second. Guy Supre are the best goaltender we could ever ask for. We had really good goalies, but for one that could stick with us long term, Guy Supre won seven Vezina trophies, five of them consecutively from 35 to 39, and then still getting it in 41 and 44. So yeah, that's my bad. I forgot that you could look at the awards of 2044, and here he is. He did get it. Of course, I just, I just mentioned it two seconds ago, but I forgot. Now, nine Jennings as well. So every year that he won the Vezina, he also won the Jennings, but then he added in a few more. So from 2035 to 2041, seven consecutive Jennings, and then back-to-back -back in 43 and 44. So nine out of 10 over that 10-year period. Parker Martinez didn't win a ton of hardware, but I just got to make note one more time. This guy was a sixth-round pick in 2028. He had low elite potential. He stayed in San Diego for like four seasons. He was between 83 and 87 overall. With us, he scored 379 points in 410 games. His last two seasons, he scored 195 points in both full seasons. 2043, he won just the James Norris, but in 2044, he got the Hart, the Ted Lindsay, the James Norris, and the Lady Bing. Very, very hard to do. Now, for all of our Stanley Cups, of all the Conn Smythes running through them from 2029 to 2043, Rantanen, Anderson, Silver, Perfetti, Silver, Pellick, Wong, Pellick, Wong, Pellick, Martinez. So two for Trevor Wong, three for Skylar Pellick, two for Duke Silver, one for Rantanen, one for Anderson, one for Perfetti, one for Martinez. Just absolutely love to see it. And now we got to get into the created player stats. So I sorted all the created players by their, um, by their point totals, as well as you can see their player type and the year that they retired. So Duke Silver, like I said once again, I didn't rearrange anything. He was the last free uh, draft pick available in the fantasy draft. I took Duke Silver, and he ended up being the best of them all, scoring 2,088 points in 1,764 games. I don't know if he had the best point-per-game uh, ratio, but he definitely had the most points overall. Keenan Johnson was behind him with 1929, then Rory Cherry. Ellis Anderson was the best defenseman with 1,846. Then you go down the line. Uh, for example, Massimiliano Bio retired in 2037, but he had more points than a lot of the guys who retired in, after him. For defensemen after Ellis Anderson, it goes to Jinkyo Chong with 1,697 over a point per game. The only players who weren't a point per game were the defensemen, aside from Chong and um, Anderson, uh, Gerante, Vickers, Cornell, and Gupta. Funny that the two-way D scored more than the offensive defensemen, still with an extra season. In the goalie categories, they both 
uh, both goalies played over 1,300 games. Sandro Tommy retiring four years before Eddie Fontaine. And he got more wins than him too, going 669, 515, and 98 with 59 shutouts. Eddie Fontaine was on the better team most of the time though. 82 shutouts from him. He had some good runs with the Islanders, 2.89 goals against average. And Sandro Tommy even scored a goal. So a great career from him. So from Jeremiah Gupta who scored uh, only 564 as a defensive defenseman, all the way up to Duke Silver. And just look at the, uh, the game play, the games played as well. All these guys, Roger Cornell, close to 2,000 games just one season away, all retiring between 2037 and 2043. So of all the created players, they all started out medium franchise, 85 overall. They all had the best chance, but some of them really took the opportunity and molded, melded well with their teams and they really made good careers for themselves one two three four five players getting over a thousand goals keenan johnson just won away with 999 and to finish it off here are the final records boys from 2019 to 2044 through 25 years we won 1382 games 516 losses most of them coming in our first five seasons 152 overtime losses our playoff record was 247, 114, so quite respectable, I would say. 19 President's Trophies all coming consecutively from 2026 to 2044. We made the Stanley Cup Finals 12 times, and we only lost one of those as we had 11 Stanley Cup Championships through the 25 years. And our best season at, uh, in terms of wins was the 2038-39 season where we won 66 regular season games. So that brings us to the end of our journey in the Honolulu Huskies Custom Fantasy Draft Franchise Mode. A long couple months with some fantastic records. The last four days for me have been only Huskies night and day. So like I said at the beginning of this video, if you enjoyed it, if there's any crazy stats that you loved, any player particularly that you really enjoyed, any funny thing that happened, please let me know in the comments. I love seeing that you enjoyed the content as well. Leave a like, leave a subscription for more NHL content because my next series, I need to hear from you in the comments and even on my Twitter. A link in the description where I'll have a link to the poll on my Twitter, twitter.com slash data782, where I will compile the votes from there and the votes in this comment section to figure out what my next series is going to be. From the comments in the last video, there were 10 different ideas, 10 or 11 different ideas that were made. And the most popular uh, ideas for the next franchise mode, the Wild, the Sabres, and the Penguins. There were also a couple of votes for expansions, but like I said, I'm really not interested in expansion because I did one this franchise mode and I did one two franchises modes ago. So I'd really like to just take over an already established NHL team and try to rebuild it slash keep it afloat. So for the Wild or the Sabres, it's a bit of a rebuild. For the Sabres, we'll be keeping, just trying to build around Jack Eichel. The Wild would be pretty much a full rebuild. But for the Penguins, it would be really interesting because you're trying to keep the core of Crosby and Malkin competitive while also looking towards the future. So Wild, Sabres, and Penguins are the three possibilities for the next franchise mode. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments and in the Twitter poll. But without further ado, that is the end of this franchise mode. Duke Silver, Ellis Anderson, Trevor Wong, Cole Perfetti, Skylar Pellick, Ezra Pittis, Mats Lindback, Guy Supre, all our goalies, and Kyle Wood. Can't forget Kyle Wood, who has four Stanley Cup rings with the Huskies, the ultimate depth master, who we built the statue of outside of Diamond Head Arena. It has been a super fun ride going through the 25 years with this team, winning 19 consecutive President's Trophies, winning 11 Stanley Cups, and just really breaking some insane records. One of the best teams I've ever simulated with. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, like I said, please let me know. Drop a subscription. I look forward to hearing from you in the comments and on the Twitter poll. I'm going to take a few days off NHL as I wait to hear from all of you. Maybe a week or so, I'll be putting out some other content. But looking forward to getting back to probably the last series of NHL 20 before NHL 21 comes out. So once again, thank you so, so much for watching. And I will look forward to seeing you in the next one. Let's go Huskies.